In recent years, paleontologists have made some incredible discoveries. Dinosaurs interest many of us, and every time one of these ancient creatures is unearthed it gives us a small peek into what life would have been like millions of years ago. One of the most interesting discoveries that caused much discussion is that of Mary Schweitzer's T-Rex. For years researchers have known about the giant theropod dinosaur Tyrannosaurus rex, but Mary's discovery shocked even the most knowledgeable researchers. A paleontologist named Mary Schweitzer discovered astonishing evidence that may change the world's view of dinosaurs. While studying a slice of Tyrannosaurus rex bone through a telescope, she spotted something that looked like red blood cells. This seemed impossible because organic remains could not possibly survive the fossilization process. Further tests, however, indicated that the structures were actually red blood cells from a 67 million year old Tyrannosaurus rex. In the years that followed, Mary and her team discovered other soft tissues, including what looked like blood vessels and feather fibers. Skeptics, however, argued that what they claimed to be organic tissues were actually biofilms formed by microbes which had invaded the fossil bones. Schweitzer and her team have continued to gather support for their conclusions, with the most recent evidence coming from molecular analysis of what seemed to be bone cells from T. rex. After isolating the possible osteocytes, the team subjected them to tests, exposing them to antibodies that targeted a protein found in bird cells only. Considering that birds are dinosaur descendants, there was a reaction as would be expected if the cells were from dinosaurs. When subjected to other antibodies that target DNA, they bond to specific regions inside the cell's membrane. After using the spectrometry technique on the dinosaur's bone extract, the team of researchers found the sequences of amino acid proteins match protein sequences present in all animal cells. The discovery of whole cells in the T-Rex bone amazed everyone who did not imagine the possible existence of soft tissues from dinosaurs in the current age. Schweitzer has reversed the usual belief by proving that 67 million year old fossils can still hold soft tissues inside. Something that has baffled many at the time is it was thought that it would have wasted away within a million years. This discovery could shed light on the evolution of dinosaurs, and the working of their muscles and blood vessels, and help solve the long-time discussion on whether dinosaurs were warm-blooded or cold-blooded. In the year 2000, the chief of field crew at the Museum of the Rockies spotted a bone sticking out of a wall of rock which ended up being a portion of what could be the most perfectly preserved T-Rex. Workers chipped it off and named it B-Rex. After studying the B-Rex bones, Schweitzer discovered it was a female dinosaur and it was pregnant. According to bird research, female birds form the medullary bone, a structure that is rich in calcium inside their bones before they start laying eggs, from which they draw calcium for the formation of eggshells. Today, scientists believe that the closest relatives to the dinosaurs is that of birds. Schweitzer studied two of the birds believed to be the most primitive today, the ostrich and emus to understand the bone, and she was right. The B-Rex bone actually had a store of medullary bone before it lost its life. Microscope images of the ostrich's and emus medullary bone were placed alongside the dinosaur's bone in a paper and this was published in June of 2006 in the issue of Science Journal, and they showed features that were almost identical. Another interesting discovery is that of the two fighting dinosaurs. Two dinosaurs of Velociraptor and Protoceratops were preserved in this remarkable pose, after being buried in a landslide while fighting around 18 million years ago. Paleontologists discovered a Velociraptor engaged in a fight with a Protoceratops, with the raptor grabbing the protoceratops head shield in its claws, appearing to be lodged deep in its body cavity. Scientists now reveal that the velociraptor was caught while apparently scavenging on the larger herbivorous protoceratops. Apart from grooves from velociraptor's teeth boring protoceratops bones, scientists also discovered fossil remains of both dinosaurs which were matching the marks. The fossils, which were dug from a red sandstone mound in 2008 in Mongolia, 
contained heavily eroded bones from protoceratops, with two smaller curved teeth that were either from a velociraptor or its close relative. During their existence around 17 million years ago, the area was probably a sandy desert with little vegetation. The teeth sizes suggest they were adult dinosaurs, with the Velociraptor being around 5 feet long and the Protoceratops being around 6.5 feet long. Bite marks around Protoceratops jaw suggest that the raptor did not kill it, but was just rather scavenging on its lifeless body. There is little evidence in the fossil records about the feeding patterns of dinosaurs like the Velociraptor and T-Rex. Paleontologists are still debating on the findings, and proposed the possibility that the two dinosaurs actually took each other down, saying that the raptor's claws dug into Protoceratops' throat, which appears at the same time to be biting down on the predator's right arm. It is however also possible that the raptors were not accustomed to feeding on the Protoceratops, and the two dinosaurs could be presenting a possible encounter which resulted in them fighting. A new fossil discovery that was published in the Journal of Paleography suggests that this could not have happened, and provides more evidence that the Velociraptor actually fed on the Protoceratops on a regular basis, by scavenging and also hunting them actively. According to Davis Hon, a researcher and paleontologist at the Institute of Vertebrate Paleontology in Beijing, the proposed prey was too big and meaty for the raptor to be struggling to scrap off fragments of meat from the jaws. He suggests that when carnivores are faced with large carcasses, they start at the hind legs and the belly and the head is usually the last option. In this case, it's the skull and jaws that had the bite marks of the scavenger's teeth, and are most likely the leftovers, not necessarily the first preference of the carnivores. This behaviour seems to be in line with that of most modern day predators, with almost all carnivores like lions and jackals doing both. These new findings shed more light on the findings of 30 years ago, suggesting that the two were locked in combat as the raptor hunted the herbivore. It can be argued that the occurrence was a chance encounter, implying that the Velociraptor was not a predator but a scavenger. What could have taken down the Protoceratops is still a mystery, mostly because its fossil bones were not preserved well enough. Researchers suggested there is a probability that they were once in perfect condition before being subjected to erosion. Further saying that had the researchers dug the specimens up a few months earlier, they would have found the specimens in perfect condition, and had they gone there a few months later they would have found nothing to study. Another interesting study made by researchers is that T-Rex was allegedly a gentle lover. Despite being known by many as one of the greatest land predators, it seems that T-Rex also had a gentle side. According to a paper recently published in the Journal of Scientific Reports, Trinosaurus rex had an extremely sensitive nose, and might have rubbed their faces together as a vital part of their mating ritual. According to the publication, the findings have been backed up by the discoveries that were made on the remains of a T-Rex relative, which indicated that they had clusters of nerve openings on the snout, making it like a third hand. Currently, similar patterns have been seen in crocodiles with their jaws having many sensitive bumps. The finding comes after a new member of the Tyrannosaur family was discovered in Montana. This theropod existed 74 million years before T-Rex, and was 75% the size of the Tyrannosaurus rex, having a body length of around 30 feet. Fossil skulls and skeletons of various creatures that seemed unusually well preserved were discovered, and it was the dinosaur D. Horneries face that gave the most important information, bringing a new window in the evolution and anatomy of Tyrannosaurus. Researchers believe that the Tyrannosaurus and other dinosaurs had a mask of scales that were large and flattened, with regions of tough skin around their jaws and snouts. Dr. Thomas Carr, lead scientist at the Carthage College in Wisconsin, said that these discoveries show them that Tyrannosaurus had super sensitive skin. These nerves have a special function in a lot of animals and birds, carrying signals from the receptors, and enabling them to zero in on the IR radiation from prey that are warm-blooded. Crocodiles sense vibrations in water through these nerves, 
and birds use them to detect magnetic fields while migrating. So what do you make of these interesting dinosaur discoveries? And how do you think blood cells were able to survive inside a T-Rex bone? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below, and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries.